and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie and this is the weekly wrap up for week number two in November. The year's almost over. Uh, November the 11th through the 17th. It's almost the end of the year. I decided to get my hair curled. It's like looking shorter. Yeah, yeah. Things like that. Um, I read seven books last week. I'm really trying to put a dent in this, trying to get to 365 before the end of the year. And being that we have 43 days on the day that I recorded this um, left in the year, I'd say I have my work to you know, cut out for me because I believe I'm at like a 309 and with only 43 days left, I'm going to have to start getting some books done, more books in a single day than just one a day because 43 and 309 is not going to be 365. So, well, let's get with what I did read last week. Alrighty, to start the a week off, I read The Queen, Aretha Franklin by Michael Gilmore. This is for non fic November, and I would place this in biography because it is mostly Michael compiling a whole bunch of information that he has found about Aretha Franklin and telling her story. I give this book three stars and I listen to it on audiobook. There really isn't that much for me to say about it because, like I said, it's a biography more than it is an audiobook autobiography so it's not really her telling her story it is someone else telling her story through whatever research they could compile the next book i finished was a feeding of the dragon by shannon washington i read this for nonfic november as well i do place this one in autobiography i give this one three stars i listen to it on, as an audiobook this is sharon's story while she was growing up a little snippet of her life when her family lived in a library yes you heard that correctly her family lived in a library and it's a fun fantastical way for her to tell her story it's a short story so it's really it was a really quick listen and I really enjoyed it the next book that I read this month or this week was you can't touch my hair and other things I still have to explain by Phoebe Robinson and this is for nonfic November as well. I give this book three stars. I listened to it on audiobook and this is definitely a book you need to listen to on audiobook because if you were just reading it, which is why it gets only three stars for me in the first place, the comedic timing that Phoebe allows or gives to the audiobook is definitely needed because I don't think if I was just reading the words I would have probably DNF this book just because I didn't agree with some of the things that she said but the way that she gave it that comedic spin to it it allowed me to listen and hear what she was trying to you know give her opinion on everything and it gave with a comedic form to it. The next book I read was The Hardest Fall by Ella, uh, I guess it's Maisie, and I placed this one in New Adult. I give this book four stars. I listened to it on audiobook. This book follows Zoe and Dylan. Dylan is the, like, college wide receiver. He's a real hopeful. They have a chance meeting, Zoe and Dylan do, one day when she is a freshman, and I believe he is a sophomore, she sort of takes on a dare, and they meet in an uncompromising sort of situation. Years pass, they bump into each other again, but still haven't really, you know, given each other their names and then they bump into each other for a third time unexpectedly and they have to deal with each other and this is sort of their story of becoming friends and then also possibly more 
the next book that I read was Renaissance Man by Tessa Bailey. I placed this in erotica short stories. I give this book five stars. I listened to it on the podcast for Read Me Romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. Read me romance. Read, read me romance. If you guys have not subscribed to that podcast yet, you need to go and do it because this book was amazing. Just like Alexa Riley's book was the week before. I am enjoying this format of getting a couple chapters a day and then on Friday having your book finished and then that whole possibility for more when the actual ebook comes out is so amazing. But it's just fun to hear Tessa and Alexa Riley, their banter during the podcast, and also the stories are fun and they're erotic and they're just fun and sexy and hot yes people may say oh well why did you give it five stars if it was you know erotic but that's my thing so that's why I give it five stars because it was my thing I like my erotic stories and yeah that's just how that's gonna roll I'm giving it five stars because it was fun in this story you have Kyle who is a previously special forces a soldier who is now doing some other things he likes to move around while well, he meets Cameron in an uncompromising position at a renaissance fair and he has to or he decides to join in and participate in the renaissance fair to win the hand of fair maiden Cameron. And it's their fun and their hijinks and it was, it was just great. It was hot. It was sexy. It was great. The next book I read was If I Only Knew by Corinne Michaels. This is a contemporary. I give this 4.5 to 5 stars. I listen to it as an ARC audiobook because it's an Audible original. The ebook and the ebook doesn't come out until January. I believe it is. But if you were an Audible subscriber you can buy this book now and it's amazing i loved it this is danielle and milo's story danielle is a newly widowed woman and the reason i love these stories so much it's the fourth friend in the four ladies that you have met in the previous books and the reason i love these so much is because they're mature women they are over the age of 35 all of them to include Danielle, and they have their lives like right there, and it's it's there, and then something happens, or someone is introduced, and yes, yes. So I'm not gonna tell you what this story is about, just know that Danielle has a new story because she is newly widowed. And whew, Milo, oh my goodness, the narrator for Milo, was melt your panties off yummy i mean as soon as he had a part i was like oh whew, good lord he's british and he is Colum's brother who comes from a different book you don't need to read the other book to understand this whole story this whole dynamic you can read the miss standalones but it's so much more fun to read all in order for the rest of the, fa of the family of the family yes um to get that whole dynamic but danielle and milo's story is amazing and yes second chance baby second chance and not necessarily second chance with the with the one you fell in love with a while ago it's just second chance at love and two thumbs up yes most definitely then the final book that i read for last week was a dear diamond by steffi walls it's placed in contemporary i give this book 4.525 stars as well i read this as an arc it doesn't release until november the 19th so you guys can get it tomorrow i say you should because this is different than any other Steffi Walls book that I have read. I started reading this book during my son's swim meet and I had to shut it because it's sexy, it's hot, it's steamy. It is about Nikki and Riker. Riker is a young man that had some troubles. Well, no, not troubles. He has a connection to the dark nasty underworld in 
Illinois and he wanted to get out but found himself dragged back in by his best friend Chase and then after he gets out of jail he meets Nikki who is a work in the pole up on the stage in one of the gang or yep yeah, mob gang gangs clubs to help her mother out so these two have this dynamic and she has a persona when she's on stage he has this persona that he just emits because he's a tattooed good looking guy but doesn't have an eye for any of the other females in the strip club and yeah their dynamic is hot it's sexy and it is definitely not something that I'm used to from Steffi Walls. Usually I'm down for the angst and she gives me angst and craziness and just heart grabbing. This one had some heart touching parts, but this was more about the heat for me in this book and I really, really enjoyed it. And now it's time for what I am reading currently. Currently I am reading The Darkest Corner by Sydney Jameson. And this book, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. I believe our main male character is Max, and he has a daughter named Poppy. Something happened four years ago that he only has Poppy now. Um, I haven't gotten that far into it, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. He was an artist, and now he's no longer an artist, but... Poppy is this little spitfire of a thing at four years old and I'm really enjoying her. Well one night he takes her to an art class where he's teaching. He hates it but the two of them end up running through the parking lot because it's raining and she runs into or meets this woman named Harry who is also known as Harriet and she befriends her so that's pretty much where i am right now something else is supposed to happen this is sort of a psychological thriller so i'm waiting for it and i'm can't wait to get to it looking forward to finding out what's really going on there then the next book i am reading is love sincerely yours by sarah nye and megan quinn this book was released a couple months ago and i'm finally getting to read it so we have we have Peyton who is a marketing specialist working at I believe it's Rome's com uh, company Rome Inc who it's an outdoors com company and Rome is this like cold 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 millennial that uh, or EO guy that started his business from the ground up and is just a stickler about everything so one night Peyton gets drunk after she has resigned and gave her two weeks notice and she wrote Rome an email but not from herself from an anonymous email chain so it can't be linked back to her however hijinks have started to ensue and Rome is like oh no there is a no fraternization policy in my company and I'm not having it even though it's about me and I need to get laid. No, this is not going to happen. This is borderline sexual harassment and I'm just not going to have it. So we are, that's where I am right now. I'm trying to figure out uh, how this is going to work because Peyton has no clue or Peyton knows that she sent the the letter because she was drunk and she's just been told by her friends that coerced her into doing it but uh yeah how is this gonna play out how are these two gonna do this hate to love thing because I feel that that's what this is because he was real nasty to her when she gave her two weeks notice so so that is my week two of November, November the 11th through the 17th weekly wrap up and what I am currently reading. Make sure you check out the giveaway because it ends this week on the 23rd day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday. I will choose a winner. 
for the giveaway. Please check out that video. I'll leave it in the description box as, long, as well as in the cards. Um, so check that out. Have you read any of the books that I just named off or am reading? Let me know what you thought of them down in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.